Hi, this is Ed Gregory from photosincolor.com and today I'm going to be showing you how to use the crop tool in Photoshop. Theme tune! Ba -doo -ba -doo -boo -boo. Crop tool. Crop tool. Okay, so this is part number nine of my Photoshop tutorial training course. If you want to get the rest of this course and get all of these files to practice with, then just head over to photosincolor.com. That was a lot to say today. So, the crop tool in Photoshop. Essentially, you've got a photograph and you like it, but you want to frame it differently. You want to crop it and make it long and thin or make it landscape or make it fit to a certain size to get it printed like a five by seven or a 10 by eight. Well, you can do that inside Photoshop and it's really easy and fairly powerful as well. So let's jump in and have a look. So here we are, we're inside Photoshop and today we're using this photograph of a tractor in, in a field. This was a little joke of mine. It's a farmer working on his crop for the crop tool. Yeah, pretty lame I know. Anyway, so, here we go, the crop tool is over here in the left hand panel, like so, and all we have to do is click on this. And once we've clicked on it, we're essentially gonna get these, this, air, this border around the outside that, that we can then move. So for example, if I was just to move this in, now we can see this area here is the crop area. That's what it's gonna crop it to. Now, before we go any further, I'm gonna show you a few different options that you can find along the top, because most of the time, you're probably not just gonna to wanna to drag and drop into, drag and move this around into any random area. Now, the first thing that you're able to do, okay, so if I just come out of this, then we go to the crop tool. Now, if you hold down shift, as you drag this, it's gonna keep the current aspect ratio, which can be a huge help. Now, a few other things. Up here, this is the first set of options. You can choose your aspect ratio. So for example, you wanna do a five by seven photograph. You can click on five by seven, and it's automatically gonna put, it, put in that as a ratio. Now, if you hold on shift as well, you can actually drag that area, and then what it will do is it will actually draw a box which is at that ratio, five by seven, whichever size you want. Now, if this is portrait, you want it in landscape mode, okay? Really simple, you hit these two arrows here and it's just gonna rotate that round for you, which is a huge help. Now, if I was to just drag this around, you can see it's always gonna stay like that. So for example, I might want to go 16 by nine, like a wide screen, okay? Like from the movies, for example. Now, as I move it, it's gonna keep this box so I can see what's gonna happen. So for example, I might like this kind of a look. Now, I have a few other elements up here. Now, if it's straighten, okay, what that means is I can draw a line along the um, horizon, for example. So in this, it's quite easy. I have the ground, so I can just draw this and it's gonna make that nice and flat, which is great. Now, I've got this grid over the top. I have a selection so I can choose what I want this to be. So for example, I've got rule of thirds, which gives me the nine boxes, um, which can be helpful. I've also got this one, which is the golden ratio, which is similar, but it moves them all a little bit differently given a focus to the center. And then there's all sorts of ones. You've got diagonal lines, so you can use these to help you crop your image. So for example, that's quite a nice crop for me. So you can choose these, you've even got a golden spiral that uses the Fibonacci um, number sequence. Um, if that means anything to you, then it's great. Anyway, the next option along basically gives you some choices. The first thing here is show cropped area. So basically, if I turn that off, it means that I can just see only what I'm gonna be left with, which can be hel helpful when visualizing it, but there's actually no need for it, and I'll explain why in a minute. So you may as well leave that on because it, it's helpful to see how much extra space you have or what you're missing from the image. For example, the edge of the tree, or okay, it means I can come over this far, and okay, I just got that tree in there, so I know that I can shrink it down just a little bit, 
and that's gonna be helpful, so I've not got the tree in at all. So it really is helpful to have that on. The next option that you have down here, okay, is auto center, that's just gonna basically center it into the middle, and then you've got the enable the crop shield, which means that if you have that deselected, you literally just get the box around, and this actually makes it harder to see what you're cropping. So the basic settings that it gives you, for me, is kind of the best. Now, the next one is the most important thing within this, and that's the delete cropped pixels box. Now let me show you what happens if I have that selected, okay? So let's say we're gonna crop it like so, and I hit return, so to come out of this, I can either hit the tick box, I can hit enter or return, or I can just double click on the box. There we go, now we've cropped it. Now, the challenge with this is, if I go to the move tool by selecting this up here, or V, now I can't move this around and to because I've got rid of all of those items. Now if I duplicate this layer by hitting Command J, like so, hide the bottom layer, and now if I move this around, look, you can see I got rid of everything, okay? So let me just step back a second by Command Option Z or Z will take me all the way back to here. Now let's go back into the crop now let's do a similar crop from what we're gonna do. Let's just go in, say here. Um, and now look what I can do. If I deselect that, now hit return, and watch what's gonna happen. So now we have it here, but if I go to the move tool, can you see this box up here? I can now move this around and it saved all of those different areas, which means that I can go in and change that crop whenever I want. Essentially, what the crop tool is doing is it's changing what's called the canvas size that can be seen up here. And again, I can come into the canvas size and I can change these numbers. Okay, so for example, if I made that 8,000, what you're gonna see is it's actually changed the canvas size and it's added it in. So that's all the crop tool is doing. It's giving you a visual way of seeing what the um, canvas size option is doing. Now, a few other things that you could do with this. So let's come step it back to the beginning, the original image, and what you can actually do with the crop tool, let's keep it in 16 by nine, why not? You can actually um, add in areas, okay, which is, oh, so you can rotate, sorry, by clicking outside and you can actually rotate the image and you can see where the frame is inside and it always makes sure it doesn't add any borders. But what you can also do, let me just straighten that back up, okay? But what you can also do is I could say, well, I want to actually make the image hang off the side so I've got this area over here, like so. Now you might be wondering why would you do that? Well, essentially, if you were to imagine this, what if I wanted to make this side, so I'm just gonna use the marquee tool to select all of this, I'm gonna go edit, content aware scale, and I'm gonna drag this over here. Now essentially what I've done there is I've just added some, I've moved and stretched this, and now I've made the tractor on one side. But incredibly, coming back up to the move tool, if I was to move this, you can see the tree is still available. But look where I've extended it. It's only extended it in that one area. That's how the content aware one moves. But for example, I could now set this in and go, yep, that's exactly the image that I want to have. Let me just make it nice and straight. And I know it's 100% definitely 16 by nine. So that there is the crop tool on how to use it inside Photoshop. Remember there's some great tools within there. You can choose to keep the rest of the image by not cropping out the unused pixels. Definitely recommend doing that. Anyway, if you like this video and you want to watch the rest of my Photoshop training course, then head over to photosincolor.com where you can get the entire course and these project files. Also, please like this video and definitely subscribe as I have loads more tutorials on their way. This was Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com. Theme tune?